Cardiac Cycle Introduction A single cardiac cycle includes all the events associated with one heartbeat and consists of systole and diastole of the atria plus the systole and diastole of the ventricles. When the heart rate is about 75 beats a minute, the cardiac cycle lasts about 0.8 seconds. Pressure and volume changes during the cardiac cycle. In each cardiac cycle, the atria and ventricles alternately contract and relax, thus forcing blood from areas of higher pressure to areas of lower pressure. However, while a chamber of the heart contracts, blood pressure within it increases atrial systole. Atrial systole lasts about 0.11 seconds, and the atrial diastole is about 0.69 seconds. Contraction of the atria is responsible for the final 20% of ventricular filling called the atrial kick while the ventricles are relaxed. Depolarization of the SA node causes atrial depolarization marked by the P wave in the EKG before the beginning of atrial systole, thereby triggering atrial muscle contraction. Atrial depolarization causes atrial systole, and as the atria contract, Left atrial pressure increases, causing the A wave on jugular venous pulse. They exert pressure on the blood within, which forces blood through the open atrioventricular valves into the ventricles. Because there are no valves at the junction of the vena cava and right atrium, or at the junction of the pulmonary veins and left atrium, atrial contraction may force blood in both directions. However, Little blood is actually pumped back into the venous tributaries during the brief atrial contraction, mainly because of the inertia of the incoming blood. The left ventricular pressure at the end of atrial systole represents the left ventricular and diastolic pressure. Atrial systole contributes to a final 25 milliliters of blood to the total volume of about 105 milliliters already in each ventricle during rapid and reduced filling phase. Thus, each ventricle contains about 130 ml at the end of its relaxation period, which is called the end diastolic volume. The fourth heart sound occurs during atrial systole, but typically is audible only in pathological conditions resulting in a forceful atrial systole, such as a reduction in left ventricular compliance due to hypertrophy or infarction. After atrial contraction is complete, the atrial pressure begins to fall, which causes a slight pressure gradient reversal across the atrioventricular valves. This fall in atrial pressure following the peak of the A wave is termed the X descent that is seen on the JVP. As the pressures within the atria fall, the atrioventricular valves float upwards to its preposition before closure. Ventricular systole. During ventricular systole, which lasts about 0.3 seconds, the ventricles are contracting and at the same time the atria are relaxed in atrial diastole. It is divided into three phases. Isovolumetric contraction. The left ventricle contracts at a constant volume without changing the length of the muscle fiber since both the mitral and aortic valves are closed. During this phase, the intraventricular tension is greatly increased within the cardiac muscle fibers. On the EKG, the QRS complex representing ventricular depolarization starts just before the beginning of isovolumetric contraction, triggering the ventricular muscle contraction. During the initial part of the isovolumetric contraction, the left ventricular pressure rises above the left atrial pressure closing the mitral valve. In fact, mitral valve closure, which occurs slightly before the tricuspid valve, marking the beginning of isovolumetric contraction. Closure of atrioventricular valves produces the first heart sound, S1. It is the loudest and longest heard sound, continuing into early ejection. Left ventricular pressure continues to rise at an increasingly rapid rate until aortic pressure is reached. The left atrial pressure increases transiently due to the bulging of the mitral valve into the left atrium at the beginning of isovolumetric contraction, 
causing the C wave. During this interval, cardiac muscle fibers are contracting and exerting force, but not yet shortening. As a result, the muscle contraction is isometric. That is, the muscle length remains the same. Moreover, because all four valves are closed, ventricular volume remains the same, hence isovolumic at the end diastolic volume. Ventricular pressure and volume changes during this phase. The left ventricular pressure increases from about 8 millimeters of mercury to roughly about 80 millimeters of mercury, that is about 10 times when aortic and pulmonary valves open passively. The left ventricular volume remains same at about 130 to 150 milliliters, which can be different in every individual. This is the period of highest oxygen consumption, rapid ventricular ejection. By the end of isovolumetric contraction, the left ventricular pressure greatly increases and rises above the aortic pressure, resulting in the opening of the aortic valve. This defines the beginning of ventricular ejection and continues to rise at a slower rate until maximum left ventricular pressure is reached. In this phase, the aortic valve is open and most of ejection occurs because of the apical beat. However, the aortic valve opening occurs after pulmonic valve opening. Thus, isovolumetric contraction is longer in the left ventricle. The left ventricular volume decreases rapidly, then more slowly, and the aortic pressure rises rapidly. Since the rapid ejection of blood into the aorta exceeds the drainage of the blood into the peripheral arteries, the left atrial volume begins to increase as the left atrium is refilled by the pulmonary veins. Concomitantly, the left atrial pressure also begins to increase since the mitral valve is closed during refilling, which causes the V wave on JVP. On the EKG, the isoelectric ST segment and the beginning of the T wave marking the ventricular repolarization are recorded. Reduced ejection. This lasts for about 150 milliseconds and during this phase, the ventricular ejection slows because of the basal beat. Left ventricular volume decreases more slowly, reaching its minimum value of close to 40 milliliters called the end systolic volume. The left atrial volume continues to increase due to continued refilling of the left atrium and the left atrial pressure also continues to increase, increasing the magnitude of the V wave. The end of T wave is recorded on the EKG. Pressure and volume changes during this phase. The pressure increases first from about 80 millimeters of mercury to 120 millimeters of mercury and then decreases until aortic and pulmonary valves close. Volume ejection of about 90 milliliters, which is called the stroke volume, occurs during this phase, and the end diastolic volume of 130 milliliters has now changed to 40 milliliters of end systolic volume. Ventricular diastole. The coronary arteries fill with blood during diastole because they are compressed during ventricular systole. Its duration depends on heart rate and can be divided into five phases. Protodiastole. At the end of the ejection phase, the pressures in the ventricles and the aorta are almost equal and to close the semilunar valves, the pressure in the ventricles must be less than the pressure in the aorta and pulmonary artery. For this reason, the ventricular pressure is slightly reduced which closes the aortic and pulmonary valves. A slight drop in the ventricular pressure is represented by a notch in the action potential graph of the cardiac muscle in phase 1. Closure of the aortic valve produces the characteristic incisura or dichrotic notch on the descending limb of the aortic pressure curve and it also produces the second heart sound. The incisura marks the end of the ventricular systole and beginning of the ventricular diastole. Isovolumetric relaxation. The period between closure of the semilunar valves and opening of the atrioventricular valves is termed isovolumetric relaxation. 
it is characterized by a precipitous fall in ventricular pressure without a change in ventricular volume. The beginning of the isoelectric TP segment is recorded on the EKG. Rapid ventricular filling. At the end of isovolumetric relaxation phase, left atrial pressure is above the left ventricular pressure, maintaining a pressure gradient for ventricular filling. Left ventricular pressure falls below the left atrial pressure, opening the mitral valve, which defines the beginning of ventricular filling. Left ventricular pressure continues to fall in parallel with left atrial pressure. However, the left ventricular volume increases rapidly as the left ventricle fills. The left atrial volume decreases rapidly as blood flows into the left ventricle, and the left atrial pressure starts at the peak of the V-wave, then falls as the left atrium unloads, represented by the V-descent. The third heart sound coincides with rapid ventricular filling and can be a normal finding in children and young adults, but is audible only in pathological conditions in adults over 30 to 35 years of age. The isoelectric TP segment is recorded on the EKG. Reduced filling phase or diastasis. It is a period of slow ventricular filling and its duration depends on the heart rate. The left ventricular pressure and left ventricular volume slowly increase due to the slow filling. The aortic pressure decreases slowly due to the drainage of blood into the peripheral arteries. This small, slow addition to ventricular filling is indicated by gradual rises in atrial, ventricular, and venous pressures and in ventricular volume. The end of the isoelectric TP segment is recorded on the EKG. Points to ponder. During isovolumetric contraction and relaxation, all heart valves are closed. There are no periods in which all heart valves are open. During states of increased heart rate, like during exercise, the duration of diastole decreases so that there is less time for the coronary arteries to fill with blood and supply the heart with oxygen. Patients with narrow coronary arteries, like in cases of atherosclerosis, will therefore experience chest pain during exertion. An increase in myocardial contractility as produced by catecholamines or by digitalis in a patient with a failing heart may decrease residual ventricular volume and increase the stroke volume and ejection fraction. In severely hypodynamic and dilated hearts, residual volume can become much greater than the stroke volume. Isovolumetric contraction. Closure of atrioventricular valves produces the first heart sound. Protodiastole. Closure of semilunar valves produces the second heart sound. Rapid filling phase causes third heart sound. And atrial systole against a stiff ventricle causes the fourth heart sound. 